better tell them wait, cause I'm hot now, I'm in the devil's way, this is God's plan, so you better pray, gotta watch it now with a bitter face, been a hot boy since my juvie days, prison time had me eating trays, I'm a gladiator, been to YA, did 15 and got my life straight, homies turned on me like I'm pie face, kept on with that blind faith, that gang lock didn't pay good, so I hit the booth and tried to my way. Hey, what's good with everybody, man, I hope everybody's having a productive day, full of blessing, like I always say, is one life, one chance, we only got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. I did a video did a, a long time ago. I believe it was just a YouTube short per se, and it went crazy. And the people that actually first notified me about it or actually made a post about it, they actually got a million views on Instagram on a reel. And so they're bragging about it now on the basis that they were the first ones to talk about this particular case. And um, they had the nerve to call him a buster, right? And I, I get it, gang terminologies, I speak about North and South. I do my best to refrain from using the word buster and the word scrap. I just talk about North and South. But you're gonna see a lot of these gang blogs that love to promote that kind of uh, disrespect, that level of gang disrespect. Because first, you know, they were proud to say that they were the first ones to come across the article of this guy right here. A Merced Norteño who got caught in bed with a cop. So whatever business he was conducting with this woman, I can understand what people are going to assume. I just looked at it at face value like, man, the young dude knocked a, a cop. He knocked a Merced cop, a female officer who was beautiful. And they had a little relationship, a little fling. And when he finally got raided on a gang sweep, on a gang investigation, she was right there in bed with him. And it made the police department look pretty bad. Now, this is the part that's going to throw everybody off and it's co so coincidental but sometimes you really can't believe in coincidences right the gang platform obviously is like wow well, remember that buster we talked about which i think is a form of disrespect based on the fact that dude just died the other day i think it was the day before yesterday they were like oh man we'll check out what happened read the article we're the one that went viral about it basically taking responsibility to that Everybody knew about this man's business with this female officer on the basis that they were the one to publicly publish it and go viral with it. And I think sometimes these kind of viral videos can have an adverse effect. There's a possibility they can have an adverse effect. That's the risk that a lot of us content creators are going to take when talking about specific subjects and certain scenarios and certain people. Now, I'm not going to sit here and make accusations about the, the post and the gang blog that loves to talk about Southern and Northern Hispanics. And just whether it's good or whether it's bad, whether it's negativity or gang promotion and promoting gang violence, you know, I'm not going to say they're solely responsible for this becoming such a big trending topic or raise suspicion amongst, you know, certain gang members or even pissed off police departments to the point of retaliation. I'm not going to say none of that, but it's very unfortunate that I even talked about it just in a jokingly matter. You know, it was... You know, it's incredible to see at the time that it was, you know, it took place. Little young Norteño cheesing in his mug shop, bumps a Merced police department female officer who happened to be beautiful. You know, it was a straight, it was a straight love story. It was a straight storyline that was incredible. It was just, it made us all just trip out like, no way, the homie did that. The homie, no way, this dude did that. Hell yeah. And, you know, obviously some people had their personal opinions like, man, corrupted cops, you can't trust corrupted officers. Man, what was she doing with that fool? What, and, but then it, then you you have the other side where like, man, that's what we do, man. We knock them. We got verbal vomit. We from Northern California. You know, I've seen both scenarios, but it was a jokingly matter at the time that it occurred. You know, you got to see both sides. You got to see a lot of people just be like, no way. I have, whoo, how do you do that? Very unfortunate because the kid, this man right here, if you Google his name, you know, he was found unresponsive in the cell, and there's an investigation on multiple suspects that were involved in the man's murder. So the kid goes to Merced County Jail, and it's been a few months, a very few months where he's been incarcerated for whatever he was incarcerated for. Whatever gang investigation and charges he was facing when he was busted in bed with this cop, whatever that investigation was, he's been there for quite some time. So could it be Merced County politics and Merced Norteños hating on him for a reason? Could it be dirty politics and him breaking some bonds or you know causing some infractions with the household where he was deemed no good and they left him for dead in his cell? I wouldn't put it past Norteño politics because Norteño politics are brutal, they're violent, they're, they're, they're notorious for any little reason 
is a legitimate reason to deem a Norteño no good and stab him and take his win? Or could it be, you know, cops pinning it on some inmates, cops paying off some inmates of the embarrassment that this kid did by hooking up with a Merced cop? Now, that's a far stretch. That's just reaching, if you ask me. But you, you, you see some people in the comment section throwing that narrative out there like, man, shh, that's retaliation, bro. This fool just embarrassed the whole Merced Police Department by, you know, sleeping with a Mer uh, Merced cop. Bro, at the end of the day, just like any other person, red rag, no red rag, blue rag, no blue rag, badge or no badge, that woman's a woman. Yes, some people are going to look at it like she demoralized herself on the basis that she was a cop chasing criminals protecting and serve, busting criminals, but yet she fell in love and slept with a criminal. Happens all the time, man. That's nothing new. We heard about New York police departments and cops that were working for the Italian mafia. We don't judge them. There's cops that were, you know, Texas cops and became undercover Mexican mafia members in the Texas Mexican mafia. And then he gets killed. We don't really say too much then because we look at it like, man, he pulled off a powerful move. He was a cop for the Texas Police Department or whatever police department that was at the time, whatever city that was, but yet he was actually a made member of the Mexican Mafia. It's a crazy story. Somebody has already talked about it. This right here is just another crazy story. It was just something that a young kid did. However he did it, we're never going to hear how he did it. We're never going to hear his side of the story. He was found dead in a Merced County Jail in this prison cell, and multiple people are going to be facing charges upon this kid's murder. That's what's very unfortunate. And I really wanted to bring this video to your guys' attention for two reasons. One, you know, like I said, I don't, I'm not biased. You know, I'm talking down on North. I'm talking down on South. I'm talking down on whites. I'm talking down on prison gangs. I'm talking down on myself. I'm talking down on, you know, other SNY gangs, so to speak. And you've seen hella people talk down on me too on YouTube, it's nothing, nothing crazy. You know, at the end of the day, the people that I've talked about that died, I did my best just to tell their stories, talk about certain information that I've been able to retrieve through, you know, legal aspects, through court documents, through, you know, specific investigations that have been conducted by either CDCR, by law enforcement, whatever. I share that information with you guys. But to watch a blog just talk about this kid and just disrespect him, call him a buster and, you know, just pretty much just piss on his demise because, you know, it was their video that went a million views. They were more quick to brag about their millions of views that they received on posting this certain information. And now they want to be responsible for the fact that maybe somebody pissed, maybe somebody caught wind of it and got pissed off and he got handled because they went viral with it. To me, that's just irresponsible. I think it's a pathetic excuse to brag about all over social media that you could be the cause of an inmate's death. I don't think you really want to admit that. I really don't think you want to glorify your platform and who you are, what your voice is to social media as somebody being responsible for somebody else's death. Now, mind you, as content creators, some of us that really get in depth with some of these details and some of these stories, there is a risk of that happening. There is a risk of some of our information putting other people's lives in jeopardy. Let's hope that we don't do that. Let's hope that it doesn't occur as it has happened in the past, but the kid died. And like I said, I don't know the story behind it. I'm pretty sure a lot of people are not gonna know the story behind it other than Merced County Jail inmates that are aware of the situation and are aware of what took place in County Jail. That story might never hit the news. So I just thought it was appropriate to talk about the kid's death and show everybody that, you know, being in County Jail, you can die in County Jail. LA County Jail showed us numerous times that an inmate can die in county jail. But Northern California county jails ain't no different either. Whether it's Norteño politics, black politics, even Southerners, county jail is just not the place to be. That is a breeding ground for inmates to become like prisoners, to become that successful within the penal system by being trained mentally, physically, and with weaponry, how to kill inmates. That's where your training starts out. They're just prepping you to get ready for prison. And just as easy it is to lose your life in prison, it's that easy to lose your life in county jail. This kid, you know, he wore the tattoos. He bared the tattoos of four dots on his face and whatever gang graffiti he had written all over his body. 
he smiled in his mug shots to be a proud Merced Norteño that knocked a cop. But trouble comes with a lot of that. Sometimes you might not think so. We can make an assumption that Norteño's politic against him because they were under the assumption that hey, if you were sleeping with a cop, you were talking to a cop. That could have been it. We don't know that. And I'm pretty sure that narrative and some people in the comment section are going to make that same assumptions. But right now, it's all assumptions. We don't know what the investigation entails, what it's describing, what was the motive of this kid's death. It could do. In reality, this dude probably was like, man, I knocked the cop, bro. I'm just having sex with a cop. I'm just, she's a beautiful girl. Once that badge is off, she's a regular woman, a woman with needs. I'm taking care of that. She has an attraction to thugs and criminals, whatever. That could have been as far as it went, but people might have been under the assumption, hey, man, if you were sleeping with a cop, you were talking to a cop, you were probably providing information to a cop. There could have been a lot of scenarios and people rushed to judgment and blasted him in, uh, in county jail and he lost his life. Whatever the case may be, it was still risky business. I'm not going to say that is the reason, but I can honestly tell you when it comes to Norteño politics, that's how Norteños are going to think. Why did it take so long? I can't honestly say if that's really what it is, but I can tell you right now, that would spark a lot of interest and raise a lot of eyebrows knowing that a Norteño was messing with a cop. And uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of people in that county jail were already jumping to bad conclusions and were already plotting that man's demise on that basis alone. Now, if that's not the case and it was Norteño politics or it was something else, doesn't matter. That little dark cloud hanging over that kid's head was bound to spark some type of investigation, was bound to piss somebody off, was bound to make somebody really sit in that cell and be like, can't trust this dude, this dude gotta go. So it's very unfortunate. Whatever the circumstances is that this kid lost his life, you know, my condolences to the family. It's very unfortunate the kid lost his life in county jail and he don't get to see the rest of his life and what it would look like. But that's what happens when you get involved in politics. That's what happens when you go to county jail. That's what happens when you get placed in the penal system in the judicial system, you know, there's other people playing with your life and you're only playing with your life as well when you substitute your freedom for a jail cell. So with that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. Peace.